es un, es un gran gusto que hemos observado tu trabajo y vamos a empezar con algo impresionante, con un tema que es Claro de Luna. Claro de Luna se ha considerado para mí una de las historias más emblemáticas, no controversiales, emblemáticas en tu carrera, porque un dato muy curioso, no sé si tú lo sabías, es que cuando crearon Un secreto a la montaña fue inspirada en esa película que tú hiciste en el libro. Entonces, quisiera saber cómo es el empoderamiento no solo de la mujer ahí en ese rol, sino la libertad de expresión como lo asumes, como actriz. And John has a question about Claire of the Moon. Yes. And oh. you know that this is a really important movie, as you may know, and John tell me, the, this movie, they say that inspired Broadband Mountain in some kind. And I want to add something for, to the question of John. The question is, how do, what is your opinion about the empowerment of the women that you show in this movie? But I want to add also, because in the 90s you got a small role in a Isabel Coisette movie, Constance, yes. yes. Uh, I, I, I always forget the night. This I never told you. Things so, I never told you, yes. Yes, so tell me about the empowerment of the women in both roles and both movies. Oh boy. Um, Claire the Moon was actually a very beloved movie of mine. Um, I got to know the director very well. It was very early in my career and they, uh, they loved me. And they actually considered me for Claire. I, I read for Claire. I tested for Claire. Um, and then they didn't cast me. And then when they were looking for the part of the mother, they were my, my agent, bless her, remembered and said, you liked Sherilyn. So they put me in that part. Now, because I was being considered for Claire, um, I, I did a lot of thinking about it. And I felt that love is love and you can't help who you fall in love with. And to me, that's what the movie was about. And <clears throat> Ultimately, they didn't cast me because they were concerned what playing a lesbian would do to me, a straight woman, um, its career. So I was bummed because I could understand that straight woman's straight whatever, straight lesbian, but I could understand that struggle. I could understand what, what could I have brought to the role knowing that I had been with men, but all of a sudden I'm attracted to this person, this woman. And I'm, I'm bummed that I didn't get to explore that. Um, I, I ran into the director on a flight to LA once And we sat next to each other and she looked at me and she goes, I should have cast you. <laughs> no disrespect to the lead. I love, I love the woman who played the lead. She was a friend of mine. We actually went to university together. Um, I just could have brought another layer into the role. And as for the importance, um, Yeah, that director's gone on to do a, a lot more work um, to help women. You asked about then um, things I never told you. And I, that's funny you mention it because I just found it on YouTube. I You have to share us that link later. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I only had the VHS of it. And so I haven't had a VHS player. And I just found it, and my son is currently digitizing some of my older stuff. And I just, I will send you the link. Um, and, you know, they, 
women have been put upon as being emotional beings, that emotions are bad. Um, you, you know, you should tough it up. And yet we are human beings and we all have them. And if you hold in your emotions for too long, your body fights back. It fights back physically. It fights back emotionally. And I love that this, this, this movie, I'm not thoroughly remembering it because it's been so long ago, but for my part, I was crying over ice cream. You know, it was this little scene where I'm in the aisle way and I'm bawling against the ice cream machine. And it's clearly not about ice cream. It's clearly I'm upset about something else. And rather than make fun of me in that moment, Lily Taylor's character is just reaches out. She sees another woman in distress. She doesn't know that woman, but she reaches out and asks her what's wrong. And so it's that mutual support that I just really appreciated. Antes de darte la palabra sobre una cinta muy muy aclamada, quisiera preguntarle sobre qué carajo sabemos, por así decirlo, acá en términos coloquial, trata sobre la física cuántica y sobre lo que es la teología, el tema que incluye la vida humana, pero no solo te quiero preguntar sobre eso, porque al ser tú, usted dama de honor en aquel documental, yo te pregunto desde, desde el lado cinematográfico. Chévere, ¿qué somos usted y yo en este mundo, en una película? Ok, John is asking about a documentary that I also watched back in the days and I really love. I know that sometimes it's a divisive movie, but I am the side of who love it, and it's what the, do we know? What the bleed, what the, you know? And I didn't know, by the way, I didn't know that it had a sequel. And so I need to watch it. Okay, we know that this movie deals with, I don't know, uh, very complicated things, subjects like quantities, like sometimes religion, but being part of that movie, um, the question from John is, how do you feel that is the role that we got now in life, in Earth, because it's a, it's a documentary that makes us question us. So yes, uh, what we're doing here, does the quantum world, I don't know. I know it's a crazy movie. I know sometimes people get upset. I don't. I didn't get upset. I really love it. And I need to find the, the sequel, but tell us. Well, first, it's not a sequel. It's a no. recut. There is there's quite a scuttlebutt uh, if you know scuttlebutt, scandal, um, story uh, behind the, the original cut and the producers and the directors had kind of a feud. They kind of fought. So one cut is a producer's cut and the other is a director's cut. And they um, they're, it's pretty much the same movie. It's just put together differently. That's Does crazy. That yeah. I have to ask you before you answer the, the question of John, what do you prefer? The first, the original or the or the second, the recut? I like the recut because the first one is like all the talking heads, all the you know, just kind of and it makes like a documentary. Yes. Then you go into the story. Whereas the second one cuts the story into illustrate the concept that the professional talking head is talking about. So anyway, um, <laughs> I love that movie. I was grateful to be a part of it. So much of my life. No, I don't know if I've lived my life that way or my life has just fallen into that but I became more aware of the concepts in this movie. And um, I do know people who were not even happy to be working on it. And I, I loved my part because 
I believe that you can manifest based by putting intentions into the world for positive or negative. And, you know, that, that poor bridesmaid, she just knew that was going to happen to her. You know, we all know people like that. And a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine played the, the woman who was talking about the ice, the ice crystals and how positive uh, intention changed the ice crystals. And that's a proven experiment. And um, yeah, I just find a lot of, of how my life has come together so many years after that movie the the principles in it seem to ring even more true than it did for me even then. So, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. Now I got the honor. Yes, this is my question. I really prepared it, so I need to read it. Okay. Now we're going to talk about something that is called Words Director. Because you, in your career, you had worked maybe sometimes in the small roles, but with actors, not, not directors, but actors, people that you, uh, we call it sometimes like art cinema, people who do movies with their vision. My Meals, Hideo Nakata, uh, and of course, I don't remember it, Robert Klaus. But my question is from one of my favorite movies ever i really want to know how is it working being directed by guzman san in elephant the pal de or this is a movie that really strove me it still strove me since the first day i watched it in fact we got a person here that is going to say hi at the end talking about that movie but tell me i really need to know it and if you want to talk about working with the other directors i i will be pleased well first of all gus is a family friend Um, because my ex-husband uh, is a key grip and worked on several of Gus's movies, so knows him very well. And it was a pleasure to finally get a chance to work uh, with Gus. He is very enigmatic, and I don't know the Spanish word for that. Um, enigmatico. En enigmatic. He's, he's sí, enigmatico a, he's in a Spanish. He's a mystery. He's... Um, He's a very quiet man and he's a very simple, his direction is simple, which was perfect because my training through Sanford Meisner is you, it's not brain surgery. You keep it simple. And by keeping it simple, you can bring out layers that can be discussed by people that, that may not even really be there. I mean, he likes keeping things vague so that you can create and fill in for yourself. Um, Elephant was just interesting because technically it was different. We didn't have, this was before digital media. So they were still shooting on film. So the largest film role you'd put in a camera would be a maximum of about 12 minutes. And he did Elephant with no cuts, no cuts, no stops, no edits. And um, my ex had built this cart for Harris, the director of photography, Harris Savitas, to, to stand in with the camera. And they just, you know, dollied him around that school. We would run a whole 12 minute mag so that it became very like like you were just there really watching things as if you were a student watching what's going on. Um, as far as the adults, if you go back and watch, you never see any of the adults' faces. You know, we are like, um, you know, Peanuts, Charles Schultz's comic strip, Peanuts, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> the parents are never seen. They're yes. not. They're not heard. So it is a movie about the kids for the kids. So for us, we 
we were just, I don't want to say we were just background, but we are. We're the background of the young adults' lives, you know, that, that how much influence did we have on them? Did we have any influence on them? And, you know, all of those things you can read into Gus's work and he loves it. He loves it when conversation happens because of his work. Okay. It's not a question. It's, it's more like a, 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 a congratulations because John is really interested in, he called it like human movies, so human. And he loved your role in Bond Lot, but in God Shaped Hall. If you want to define or talk about these roles, go ahead. Wow. Um, you've seen God Shaped Hall? That's, okay. that's... John, ¿tú la viste? Está preguntando. La God Shaped Hall? Sí. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, gracias. Um, uh, uh, what was the other one? Oh, punk, punk love. love, punk love. Um, that was uh, that was a beautiful movie. Um, it was very hard to 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 do because there was a lot of emotion. Um, I think the most interesting thing for me, though, watching it, is that it's based around two young actors. One actor had more experience than the other. The film was supposed to be more about my daughter, her life, her struggle with the stepfather and me. And when she leaves, my trying to find her. As the movie came on, it was as if we were shooting it, the point of view switched from it being the daughter's movie to the boyfriend's movie. And I don't know if you noticed the switch in there. So a lot of the work that I did didn't get in the movie because it didn't serve the new storyline. Um, but that night of the shooting, spoilers, um, Go ahead. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was just to get to, to get there. You just take and take and take and take. And then finally, when it's done, I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> it's four in the morning. We're breaking for lunch and I'm just sobbing. <laughs> it's like, stop. Um, but those two young kids put their heart their soul, everything they had. The night in the rain, uh, we were using rainwater from a local river and they both got hypothermia and had to go to the hospital. Put a little delay in, the, in the shooting the movie. But um, they, they put it all out there and put it on the line. And uh, uh, it's been fun to watch them both grow up over the years. But I don't, I, you know... Working with the director was a dream. He knew what he wanted. He had a very strong vision. Um, and he was really good to us um, in, in communicating what he wanted. And that was very helpful. Uh, anyway, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> porque ha sido una experiencia totalmente mágica. Y bueno, antes de darle la palabra a los invitados también, este, quisiera que este, un saludo a Colombia, a Latinoamérica, eh, tus redes sociales, qué futuros proyectos siguen, porque estamos como un poco impacientados. ¿Qué pasa con Chile? Por favor. Sí. Yes. Well, children, before we get to our guests, uh, this is the camera. Uh, of course, we are so thankful. For me, it was like, I need to talk to Sherry. Of course, John. I'm was so blown away that you, you and you, all these movies that you've watched. Oh, God, Shake Paul. Yeah, that was, 
that was that was cool. That was that was fun. That that director that was his dream, and um, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. But um, he was a brilliant, brilliant man, and I'm glad he got to make this movie. Oh, that's sad to know that. Okay, the camera is yours. Uh, give a high salute to Colombia, to the channel. Tell us about your social media. And Johnny's John is telling me this, that what is happening with Charlene? I know new projects. What is going on? Where are you? What, what can we spend? Tell us. I'm old. I don't do anything anymore. No, I'm teasing. Um, um, well, uh, thank you. Um, I actually have moved from uh, the West Coast to the East Coast, and I'm currently living in a small town where there is very little industry. Um, I am coaching. I do a lot of um, audition coaching and some during the pandemic, I've been doing some on camera uh, acting teaching. Um, as far as me personally, I am looking into getting a, an agent on the East Coast, but it's getting harder to work if you're not right in the city because of the restrictions for health and all that sort of stuff right now. Um, I'm, you caught me in between levels, you know, what am I going to do next? Where am I? You know, I don't know. Hopefully something. I don't think I'm done yet, but I'm not dead yet. That's another movie I did. We're not dead yet. Yes. So. Welcome. And thank you for, for, tuning in and watching. I am very flattered that some of the smallest and most obscure movies I thought I had done are ones that are being appreciated. Um, the seventh art film has been something that I, I fell into. I did have a, my degree in theater, but I married a man who also was film and we helped build the film industry in Portland, Oregon. And we did the work from there, knowing that we didn't have to live in Los Angeles. Um, I didn't get as much work, but the work that we did get was very full and very fulfilling. Um, I was even able to do national commercial. Uh, I did uh, I did some series work, uh, was a recurring char character on a series. And so I think the lesson there is um, you can really do it from wherever you are if you kind of put your mind to it. You don't have to just go to L.A. Look at some of the other bigger markets in your country even. I don't know exactly how it works, but... Um, I'm pretty proud of what we accomplished from that, that little place. As far as my social media, I'm not currently using social media to promote my work. Um, I did have some kind of stalker type issues in the early days of Facebook. So um, everything's pretty locked down for me in that regard. So, <laughs> so you, you, you young ones can use that stuff. I'm extremely glad to hear that. And what I'm hearing, you're uh, very passionate about your craft and your work, and I'm uh, really glad that you can share that with all of us. Uh, trust me, we're, uh, there is a lot of people who are going to watch this interview, and it is great that more people here can get to know your work. So, uh, based on that, I want to tell you about uh, an initiative that me and Monica are doing in the city, and we're going to showcase one of your works, Elephant, to a wider audience. Play Elephant as part of a cycle of movies that we're going to be introducing in the next few, few months. Okay, uh, Charlene, uh, we want you to, and of course, Monica and Victor, thank you. We want you to do, you do an invitation to the people, to the cine club that Victor and Monica got because we are, they are going to showcase Elephant in the in 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 their in, in their cycle so they were like oh you're going to talk about you're going to talk sharing please let us in so if you can do that that will be helpful you inviting the people if you can do it if you if you cannot 
we understand. No, I'm not. I'm not sure what you're asking me to do. You want me to say, um, uh, oh, invite invite to the people. Not uh, mostly. Not not. Do you want invited to watch Elephant? Oh, oh, go ahead. But invited to the cine club for Victor and Monica. Okay, Victor and Monica. Me recuerda el nombre del cine. Cine tour. The cine uh, inviting people to watch Elephant in cine tour. Cine tour is the name of the cine club from our friends. You can do that? I will try. Okay. The camera is yours. I'm Sherilyn Lawson, and I am proud to invite you to Cine Tour, and they will be showing Elephant, a small movie that, uh, well, a big movie that I had a small part in because the adults have an interesting role in this movie. And um, Victor and Monica, would like you all to know about this scenic club, Cine Tour, and please come and watch Elephant. Thank you very much, Ms. Lawson. Really. <laughs> is, that, is that what you wanted? Yes, uh, that is exactly what we needed. So thank you very much. Um, I'm driving right now, so sorry for the, no. uh, being so regret. No, it's okay. Okay, we are going to take a picture so we can show to the social media and invite people to watch this interview. So uh, I have to tell you something. You say that you are old. John, tell me something in the chat. He say she still looks beautiful and stunning. Oh. Uh, John, oh. in, in, in this, John understands. Yes. No. No, 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 no. in, in Colombia, we had a phrase, and translated will be, You look like the sun. <laughs> oh, muchas gracias. Oh, oh thank you, you. You blush. Okay, we're going to take a picture. I do blush. No sé si. Victor, Monica, ¿quieren aparecer en la foto? No. Bueno, okay. I will. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Monica, please. Aprovecha, Monica. Aprovecha, Monica. Queremos ver tu bello rostro. Okay. Yes, entonces, Juan. Two, so for me, I'm a speechless. John, can I ask a question? How how did you how did you first notice me though? I mean, because they are small parts, you know. It's it's. It, I acted because I loved it. I didn't set out to be a movie star, you know. I just want to do the work. Did you just? see a movie and then saw another movie and went, wait, I recognize her. The question goes from John, so I have to translate. John, la pregunta, aquí, aquí tú te conviertes en entrevistado. Sherin dijo, bueno, ¿cómo supiste de mí? ¿Cómo diste? Porque dijo que ella actúa por el hecho de que ama actuar, pero tú sabes que son roles pequeños. ¿Cómo diste con ella? ¿Fue que hizo una película y dijiste la va a entrevistar? Tienes que contar ahí el secreto. Bueno, yo, yo la verdad, a mí lo que es este claro de luna. Entonces yo la vi hace algunos años, yo tenía el DVD y bueno, de tantas veces que la vi, pues se me cayó. Entonces, <ríe> entonces esa fue una experiencia también y también este, siempre estuve al tanto de que yo después de trabajo nunca pensé en entrevistarla. Entonces se me dio por ver el fan también y pues de, desde ahí sigo tu carrera y pues cuando tuve como la experiencia, la capacidad, llegué a ser. Pero siempre he estado bajo las sombras hasta ahorita. Wow, that's a crazy story. John, back, back in those years, he had the DVD from Cradle of the Moon, Cradle of the Moon, sorry. Uh, oh, in Spanish, sounds so beautiful, Claro de Luna. And he, since that, he, he has been following with your career. He never, and of course, we never imagined that we had this space. And when he got this space, he, yes, he said, like, oh, I will, I will contact her, but because that movie really means so much to him. That's the so reason. Because, of, because he saw me in Claire of the Moon. Yes. He then, yes. did you like follow movies through IMDb then? Yes. How did you know which movies to? Yeah, yes. I, I will ask him. John, te pregunta acá, Sherilyn, que después de la película... ¿Tú qué es lo que haces? ¿Sigues carreras en IMDb o...? Sigo carreras o sea, en IMDb. Yes, he follows careers. Anoto IMDb. las películas y comienzo a verlas poco a poco si es que están disponibles. Got it. And, and he write down the movies 
and he watched it. So we need to watch the Isabel Quasset movie. Uh, and that's the reason to what he watched uh, that movie of God Shape It Hole. That I know yeah. it's obscure, that's an obscure game. Yeah. But Where did you find that one? Is that on YouTube? John, ¿dónde encontraste God Shape It Hole? Tienes que contar el oscuro secreto. Uy, God Shape It Hole, solo lo vi, es en páginas, bueno, lo que es páginas de internet. Vi fragmentos de a poco hasta que los pude juntar. Pero yo lo vi y me encantó mucho lo que es este tema. He saw that he watched it on the internet. He, don't, he didn't say that the pages. It was like mixed, like cut in, in, in pieces. So he started like randomly taking those parts and he managed to watch. I don't know how does he do it, but that's the reason why. And I'm yeah. impressed by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen it since we did a premiere, uh, but the director was so sick at the time. I, I couldn't focus on the movie. So I, I need to rewatch that one. And then um, the one that I wish I could get, it's not, it, um, I helped then write and then produce a film called Not Dead Yet with two other actors. Um, and we're basically, you know, three women of a certain age who are not dead yet. And we produce a movie um, to help get us more roles. And um, she hasn't put that, the executive producer hasn't put it anywhere. So no one can get it yet. I will ask John, if John, has podido, no has podido encontrar not dead yet? No, it's not only one. It's yeah. the only food, it's the only movie that we haven't we haven't find. Right. But I was a co-star, I helped write it, I helped produce it. Um yeah, it was a it was a big deal. We went to film festival, it was for women, a women's international film festivals, but some of the women's film festivals wouldn't take it because it was directed by a gay man. Oh my god. And because it was a man, it wouldn't put it in a film festival. But, you know, his, being a gay man, he had sensibilities that worked perfectly for us. So talk about a weird thing. Uh, you say it in, at, at the beginning. Uh, why can why we label love, talking about Clay, uh, Clay of the Moon, why we label sensibilities? Uh, uh, oh, my God. I don't want to. Start a, a run, but that's that's not fair. Well, because it it threatens people's understanding of life, and they get scared. They get scared that if that gets changed, then things will fall apart. I guess um, it doesn't make sense to me either, and it's very frustrating for me as well. But I have two children that are about your age and they are very much like you. So I have hope. The, the minute is closing, but thank you so much. Thank you. Shirley. Oh, thank you. This was a, this was a pleasure. I'm so thank flattered. So I'm so touched. Um, I wish I spoke Spanish. Uh, lo siento. <laughs> no, no, no te preocupes. Chao. 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 Bye, Mr. Ronnie Mouth. Buena suerte. Gracias. Gracias. Adiós. Adiós. Adiós.